Hi everyone. Uh, we have reviewed the first three three chapters of financial markets and institutions. Now we're going to go over derivative markets, the ch the fourth chapter. So what's a derivative? A derivative is a type of financial instrument whose value is derived from another underlying product, underlying asset. Those underlying assets could be forward contracts. And those uh, derivatives uh, can be classified as forward contracts, futures, swaps or options. Those underlying products could be any asset. It could be foreign currency, foreign exchange. It could be a stock or a commodity. In, in fact, investors use derivatives to hedge risk or make speculative gain that which may arise from unexpected changes in the market value of an underlying asset. Uh, we can classify derivative mark, uh, derivatives as exchange trade, traded derivatives or over the counter derivatives. Exchange traded deri derivatives are standardized uh, contracts, meaning terms, on terms and conditions are pre precisely specified, determined by the exchange. Uh, whereas in the over the counter uh, derivatives, uh, those uh, contracts can be customized by the involving parties. For example, suppose there are two parties A and B and party A, which is the uh, which has the long position, agrees to buy one stock of a, of a of some share of stock. It could be Facebook from party B. So the buyer uh, of the stock is called uh, the is the has the long position is has is said to be to have the long position whereas uh, the seller is said uh, to have the short position. So there is a forward price. So this, this is a forward example. Uh, there is a forward price, which is uh, $165. And the transaction uh, and the, uh, the maturity of this uh, forward contract is uh, a later time, say April the 1st of the coming year. If the at maturity, what happens? If the stock price increases to 170, the payoff or the profit uh, of the long party is $5. Why? Instead of uh, buying the stock for 107, uh, for the, instead of paying the market price, uh, because the, the long party uh, uh, bought uh, the forward contract, uh, the the long party can purchase uh, the stock at a lower price which is uh, the, which is determined by the forward contract uh, $165 so the payoff is $5 for the long party and the payoff is uh, minus $5 for the short party why because the market price is higher for the seller than the forward price so forward contracts require uh, both, both parties, both the long party and the short party, to engage in a transaction at a later point in time. So the transaction happens uh, in the future on the terms agreed upon at the start. So when we uh, make the contract, we determine the uh, terms at the beginning in the contract. So the, the terms agreed include the identity and quantity of the underlying asset, the manner in which the contract will be executed, when it will expire, and the fixed price at which the underlying will be exchanged. So in fact, forward contracts are customized contracts to suit involving parties' needs. And the long and short parties are engaged in a zero-sum game, meaning the payoff of uh, the... Uh, the profit of the uh, long or short party is, in fact, the loss of the uh, counterparty. Futures uh, resembles forward contracts, but uh, in fact, futures are standardized contracts. They are not customized and they are regulated by an organized exchange. The in investors must deposit an initial margin in their margin account in order uh, to, to buy or sell futures. The derivative exchange offers the two parties a guarantee against any default. And the exchange has a clearinghouse through which it settles the losses and gains of future contracts on a daily basis. The amount of money in the margin account must be greater than the initial margin 
to meet any drops in the future price, in the futures price. If the balance of the short party falls below the maintenance margin requirement, he will he or she will receive a margin call requesting the deposit uh, requesting to deposit some additional funds. Another uh, type of derivative uh, instrument is swap. Uh, in fact, swaps are over the counter contracts between two parties who agree to exchange cash flows on regular dates. In currency swap, one party trades swaps currency for a fixed interest rate and the other party trades another currency for a floating interest rate. So there are two di different types of interest rates. And traders usually exchange only the difference in the interest payments. Swap contracts are more uh, prone to default risk than futures contracts. Another type of uh, derivatives is options. Options are, uh, in fact, contingent claim contracts. And options provide an option provides the right, but not the obligation, to the buyer, uh, to the uh, buyer, to the loan party, uh, to buy or sell an underlying asset at a specific price and at a later date. So it gives uh, the holder or the loan party the right, not the obligation, to buy or sell an asset. The buyer of the option or the holder of the option, the loan party pays a premium to get this right to the writer of the contract. Multinational corporations use options as a tool to manage their exposure to currency risk. And option op and option exchanges are considered to be a zero-sum game in efficient markets. So the profit of the long party or uh, or the loss of the long party, in fact, is the uh, loss of the short party or the profit of the short party. Here is an option example. Suppose an investor buys a call option. A call option gives the holder the, the right to buy, whereas a put option gives the holder the right to sell. So a call option of uh, a stock at a, strike, at a strike price of $160 after three months from now. The option premium of the contract is $5. If the underlying stock price drops under uh, the strike price determined in the option contract, the investor decides not to exercise the call option. Why? Because if the market price is lower, uh, he or she has the opportunity to buy it at a, a lower uh, price. So uh, the long party does not, the long part of the call option does not exercise his right. He doesn't use the uh, call option. Therefore, the payoff is uh, the premium he or she uh, paid at the beginning to buy this option. And the payoff of the writer is $5. In fact, the uh, long party lost the premium. He, he, the, the loss of the long party is the premium. The profit of the uh, short party or the writer of the option uh, equals the premium. If the price of the underlying stock increases to $170, the investor in this case exercise the option. Why? because he, he has the right to purchase it at a lower price determined by in the option contract. Therefore, uh, instead of buying it for 170, he buys it at uh, 160. So he made a profit of $10, but he also paid a premium of $5. So the net payoff is $5, whereas the payoff of the writer is minus $5. So the profit of the long party is equal to the loss of the uh, short party. So again, uh, similar uh, to forward contracts, it's, this is a zero sum game. As I mentioned before, call option gives the buyer of the option the right to buy the underlying asset at a predetermined price at some future date. A call option is said to be in the money if the market price is uh, above the strike price, 
meaning it is uh, it will be exercised. A call option is out of the money if the market price is lower than the strike price, so it will not be exercised. A call option is said to be at the money if the market price equals the strike price. So the uh, long part of the call option is indifferent between uh, not exercising or ex or exercising the option. On the contrary, a put option gives the buyer or the holder of the option the right to sell the underlying asset at a predetermined date at a predetermined price uh, defined in the option contract. A put option is in the money if the market price is below the strike price. A put option is out of the money if the market price is above the strike price. A put option is at the money if the market price is equal to the strike price. So uh, the definitions of in the money, out of the money, and, uh, and out of the money is uh, the opposite for put options, uh, opposite of the uh, call option case. The relationship between the market price, regarding the relationship between the market price and the strike price. So how do we value derivatives? The value of a derivative depends on the underlying asset or rate. Its value de is derived from the underlying asset. The payoff for futures is the spot price at expiration less the forward price. The value of the swap during its lifetime depends on the present value of the expected future cash flows. Uh, so similar to the logic we have been using uh, like, uh, until now. So the, we consider the ex future expected cash flows and we discount those cash flows and consider the present value. Uh, in order to op uh, value options, uh, some models uh, are used in the markets. Uh, and uh, two fam famous models are binomial option pricing model and especially the famous Black-Scholes option pricing model is uh, very popular. So uh, during option pricing, um, uh, we try to obtain the theoretical or the real value, the intrinsic value of, of options using these, these models. So option pricing models provide, uh, provide us with a fair value of an option, the fair value or the economic value, real value. Uh, that's a theoretical value. Knowing the estimate of the fair value of an option, finance professionals could adjust their trading strategies. They could uh, compare those uh, intrinsic values with the market values and uh, adjust their strategies. So let's take a closer look at, at the Black-Scholes models. What are the variables in, used in this model? Uh, the variables include the price of the underlying asset, the strike price or the exercise price uh, specified in the contract. Volatility, as you know, is the measure of uh, risk. It's a measure of how the security prices will move. But uh, since we don't know, this usually the historical uh, standard deviation of returns is uh, used. And uh, there we have the time until expiration and the risk-free interest rate. The higher the historical volatility of the underlying asset, the higher the option price. As I said, we usually use historical volatility as, a, as an estimate for uh, future volatility. And the greater the risk, the riskiness, the greater the risk of the underlying asset, the higher will be the option price or the option premium. So that was all for chapter four.